Today, I'm gonna show you how to get some smooth water by adjusting your camera settings so that you can get photos like this. Let's get to it. First things first, you're going to need a tripod in order to create this effect or something to stabilize your camera so it does not move at all. If you're taking photos on a windy day and you do have a tripod, you can use the little hook on the bottom of your tripod to add some weight to it in order to stabilize it some more. If you don't have a tripod, you can lean against a tree or a boulder in order to stabilize your camera as you are taking photos. Worst case scenario, if you don't have a tripod or something to lean against, then you're going to have to hold your camera as still as you can and take a deep breath and pray that your photo does not come out extremely blurry because it is very hard to stabilize with just your body. But if you got to do it, do it. There's no guarantee that you're going to get a super clear photo though. Just be aware of that. This photo right here is one that I actually took free-handed like that and I don't know how it came out as good as it did but if you look closely you can see that the background is a little bit blurry which is not ideal. The main thing that you need to do in order to have the smooth water effect is lower your shutter speed. Usually when I'm adjusting my shutter speed, I like to put it at anything below zero. So at four seconds, eight seconds, 16, 30, or the bulb, depending on how bright the situation is and how low I can go. Once you lower your shutter speed, your shutter will be open for longer. And so it captures your water as it's moving. This is why you need a tripod in order to stabilize your camera because that shutter is open longer and if you move the camera at all, then it will be open and capture that movement. Also, by lowering your shutter speed, it brings in more light, which brings me to my next point. You will need to adjust your settings in order to accommodate for the light that is being let in by lowering your shutter speed. This means dropping your ISO all the way down to 100 and increasing your f-stop. However, due to something called diffraction, you don't want to increase your f-stop too far above 16 or you'll start to lose the finer details in your photo. For this reason, the best time of day to capture a photo with smooth water is just before sunrise or just after sunset when there's enough light that you can get a good photo, but not so much that your photo is completely blown out unless you increase your f-stop way beyond 16. By the way, if you want to learn more about f-stops and diffraction, you can check out a video I made all about aperture right here. So anyways, let's say that you're trying to get a photo with some creamy, smooth water, and so you lower your shutter speed, but it is very bright outside. A solution that you can use other than increasing your f-stop is to throw a ND filter onto your lens. And you can find these on Amazon for relatively cheap. Just look at your lens size, which is usually located on the front of your lens next to this little symbol. And once you buy one, preferably a variable one, because you can adjust the settings with that one, you can pop it onto your lens and control how much light is getting to your lens and how exposed your photo is. Before we move on, I would just like to shamelessly plug in that if you want more videos with photography tips, gear reviews, and outdoor adventures, please hit that subscribe button if you're not already part of the tribe. If you are a part of the tribe and you think this video deserves a like, then hit that like button. I would greatly appreciate it. Now that your camera is in place and the settings are adjusted correctly, it is time to take the shot. But you can't just take the shot because if you touch that button, then you risk your camera moving while your shutter is open. So what you have to do is use something called a cable release in order to remotely click your shutter. However, personally, I don't have a cable release, so a solution that I'm gonna offer you that I always use is to set my camera timer on so that it has two seconds from when I tap the screen to when it takes a photo. 
This allows me to back away from my camera and avoid moving it and causing blurriness. And another solution that you can implement if you don't want to set the timer for some reason is to use your cell phone as a remote controller for your camera if your camera is capable of it. Personally, I have a Canon M50, so I use the Canon Connect app to connect my cell phone to remotely control my camera. And now, with all that being said, it is time to see the shot. And boom, here is the photo with some smooth water. The technique isn't very hard, but it is very rewarding when it works. And I hope that by seeing this video, you are able to implement it next time you're out and about taking photos. But on that note, until next time, bye.